everyone this is Samantha from the Dancing Soap Dish and I have another mosaic soap project for you here today just get rid of that piece of lint from the burlap that's sitting there I have made these buffalo plaid and red pickup truck melt and pour soaps because we're coming into the season of giving as you can see I've made a buffalo plaid pattern out of square mosaic soap tiles on the back of this soap I think it turned out quite well and then I have embedded inside I don't know if you can see through the side there just a, a little soap embed of a red pickup truck with a freshly cut tree in the back and then the buffalo plaid becomes the background for that embed so this is the October project of my 2023 mosaic soap challenge. You can find all my mosaic soap tutorials on a special playlist on this YouTube channel. But for now, it's time to get started showing you how to make buffalo plaid melt and pour soap bars. So first of all, I'm laying out my mosaic tile silicon molds. These are the ones I've used for all my mosaic soap projects. I'm using the square sections today. Uh, so I'm just going to position my molds in, in a place so that it's easier to get to the square sections. Uh, I'm going to be making three different colours, obviously a black and a red and an intermediate colour, sort of like a, a burgundy that sits in between the two. Uh, I'm going to do red first. Uh, normally 25 grams or so would fill up one of these sections of mosaic tiles but I want a little bit of red left over to use to make my burgundy so I'm actually doing about 40 grams um, of clear melt and pour soap giving that a good stir I do have some titanium dioxide here which is white I'm going to add one tiny little drop because I want my soap to be opaque <clears throat> I want a really deep red so I don't want to add too much white or else I'll end up with pink. And then I'm going to add two drops of this really rich, dark red liquid soap colouring here. There we go. Look at that. That's a beautiful red. That will be perfect for my buffalo plaid. So I'm just going to fill up one section of square mosaic tiles with this red. I have some isopropyl alcohol on hand uh, just to uh, make sure that it flows evenly into each cavity of the mold and also to make sure there's no bubbles at the end. I'm using a scraper as well um, just to make sure that all the squares are filled to the same height and I'm going to scrape off any excess. Again it just makes sure that all of those squares are the same height and will help me break them apart later. So my excess I'm just popping in this uh, mold that I've got sitting here that I'm going to assemble my soaps in later because I will keep that for making my burgundy okay so now I will make my black what I'm also going to do with my black is make my embeds so I have here this really cool little mold I found it's for resin and it's to make a straw topper so it's got two little pickup truck cavities um, each facing a different way because they're supposed to go back to back and then there's these little half sections here and you assemble them to make uh, a little truck with a hole in the center that you can poke a straw through. It's like a straw topper. Uh, it's meant for resin crafts. But I'm going to use it today to make my embeds. And I'm actually going to start with a totally black embed and uh, then I'll use some mica to paint it later. So I need to weigh out enough soap to fill up my embeds and also my square mosaic tiles plus a little bit extra for the burgundy so I've got about <clears throat> uh, 65 grams of soap here I've reused um, the same cup it doesn't matter that it's going to be red because I'm going to make it black and black pretty much uh, wipes every other color out anyway so that's not an issue uh, I'm gonna add a little bit of red to it you don't have to do this but the only black that I have isn't actually a very solid black like even if you add a lot of it you find that in transparent soap it just looks like really a smoky gray sort of effect uh, and again I want it to be really opaque and really dark so I'm using this red soap coloring as a base because it is very dark 
and then I don't have to add quite so much of the black in order to get a good black out of it. So it's just a more efficient way for me. Uh, if you have a decent black soap coloring, see how that's sort of, that's sort of dark brown there, that's not quite black yet. Uh, if you have a decent black coloring, obviously you don't have to do this. You can just weigh out some transparent soap, tint it black, there you go. Uh, but I'm just explaining here <clears throat> as to why I've added red to this. So there we go, I'm adding a few more drops of the black to try and get this as dark as I can. It's looking pretty good now. Yeah, scraping down the sides. I think I'm happy with this. All right, so I'm gonna fill up my embed mold first very carefully. I love the pouring spouts on these little cups that I use. These are actually cups that baristas use uh, for milk you know, in coffee making and stuff like that. And I find they are so good for soap because uh, they have a pouring spout at either end. You can pour left-handed, you can pour right-handed and um, you can get down really close and fill up really delicate things like this without spilling it everywhere. So there we go. I'm just gonna fill that all the way to the top. Give it a spray with my alcohol to get rid of any bubbles. Uh, again, I am filling up a square tiled section. This will be my black tiles. Just going to scrape off any excess to make sure that my tiles are all the same height. There we go. And the remaining black, I will just put in this mold to pop out later to make my burgundy. All right, there we go. So I'm gonna let that uh, set up for a while and uh, then I can come back and make my, make my third color, the burgundy. Uh, so it's probably about 20 minutes later. Uh, these are set, they're still very, very soft, but um, that's okay, I'm just gonna remelt them so I don't need it to be really hard. See how it really is quite soft. Um, and I'll, I'm gonna use all of this red. I'll just try and break it up. No, see, I thought I might be able to, to just tear it up, but it's, it's so soft, it's just bending. So I'm just gonna cut this up here. Here we go. Cut it into cubes, just like you would normally. And um, I'm going to pop it into, um, again, I'm just using the same cup. Uh, so it's not 50-50 when you're trying to make a burgundy because black is just such a dark color. I'm actually gonna add more red than I am black. So I'm weighing out about 25 grams and I've got 15 grams of that being red and only 10 grams of that being black. Because uh, otherwise, it'll just be too dark. The, um, the the black really does overwhelm the red. Okay, I'm going to give that a bit of a stir. Hopefully, I will come up with a colour that's somewhere in between the black and the red. And not too dark. What do we think? It almost looks this is kind of like an eggplant colour. Very aubergine sort of thing. Um, probably could have done with maybe a little bit more red um, but I, I think it's gonna work uh, if, if when you're doing yours you might want to maybe add a little bit more red than black than I did and get a, a more of a sort of ready brown color than this really sort of dark aubergine that I've got but it's a nice color I like it I'm sure it'll work out fine there we go and again just scraping that off and give that a spray and then I'll let these all set. Oh, there you go. I dripped a little bit on there, but that's okay. I was able to scrape that off. Yep, these are looking pretty good. All right, so I'm just going to quickly show you here, popping all these little squares out of the mold. I find the easiest way to do it is just to bend your mold back as far as you can and use your thumb just to flick them all out, just like that. Quick and easy. And I'm just going to play with them while I've got them and see how it's going to look. So here is my burgundy, which is more like an aubergine. But if, they, if I put these in the middle here, there we go. It looks quite dark because of the lighting that I'm using, but it's, yeah, it's not that dark in real life. All right, so there we go. I'm happy with that. It's time now to assemble my pattern. I'm using this six centimeter by six centimeter um, cavity mold, square mold. 
uh, because these little one centimeter by one centimeter squares fit in it perfectly. Uh, I have a bamboo skewer here on hand just to help me position some tiles. I find that it comes in useful. And I've also trimmed all of these tiles. Um, if there was just any sort of soap fray around the edges, I've given them a trim so they're all nice and ready to go. I'm also checking as I put each one down uh, that I'm using the good side. There's a side that's a little bit rough that was the back and the side that was uh, down inside the mold that's nice and smooth. So that smooth side is going face down into this mold so that the, the back of my soap will be nice and smooth. The rough side is going to end up being, you know, the background for my pickup trucks, which it won't really be very obvious that they're rough at all because they're going to be set back in the soap. Uh, so I find the easiest way to assemble a plaid pattern uh, is to do it diagonally. So you can put in a whole diagonal row of your intermediate colors, and then you can alternate your black and your red, your black and the red for the next diagonal roll. And then if you just keep working that way, eventually you get a beautiful plaid pattern, just like this. Uh, so I'm going to end up using all of the uh, aubergine colored tiles, all 36 of those that I made, uh, but only half of the black and the red. Uh, so I will have some of those left over, as you can see here. But there we go, I'm pushing them down, making sure they're sitting nice and flat against the bottom of the mold. And that is done. Okay, time for some fun. We're gonna paint up these little pickup trucks. So at the moment, they just look like shadows silhouettes of pickup trucks uh, there actually are some pretty good details in this mold uh, if i um if i just hold it up there you go if you can see in the light there you go you can see uh, some of the details of the truck and also the tree and that is going to work to my advantage when i use my mica to paint them i'm going to make sure that i don't put my mica into those little grooves so those little black details show through and uh, and give me some dimension for these little embeds. So I have a beautiful red, shiny red for my pickup truck, a beautiful green for my Christmas tree, and I'm also using a pearlescent white uh, just for some highlights as well. I'm going to make up some um, mica paint here. I've got my little sponges as well. Uh, I like to use these. These are actually lip gloss ones. They come in really handy. I've also got some vegetable glycerin, some isopropyl alcohol, and some eye droppers. And what I'm going to do first of all is just put a little bit of mica into each one of these little paint palette cavities. There we go. Um, I'm doing a fair amount of red, but only a little bit of green and a little bit of white because obviously... I won't need as much of those colors. So there we go. I'm just sort of winging it. It's no big deal. There we go. Uh, and in order to make my paint, I'm going to add vegetable glycerin and isopropyl alcohol at a ratio of one to two. So however much glycerin I add, I'm going to add double that amount of the alcohol. And I find if you use that sort of uh, ratio to make a paint, you get a very decent paint that doesn't dry out too quickly, like it does when you um, only use alcohol, um, and also doesn't stay wet for ages, which is sort of what happens if you only use glycerin. The glycerin doesn't tend to dry. Uh, so there we go, I've mixed that up and I'm just applying it to my finger sponge here and just making sure I'm going to get uh, a nice even coverage. There we go, I think that's ready to go. So I'm going to grab my first little embed and I'm going to cover up the Christmas tree with this paper towel. And then I'm going to dab on all the red. I'm staying away from the wheels as best I can, but I'll be able to fix those up later. There will be a little bit of red on the wheels. And I'm just trying to give this pickup truck a nice even coat of this red mica paint that I've just made up. And as you can see, the black details are coming through there. That looks so cute. I really like that. Okay, I'm also going to pour some alcohol in here and use one of my lip brushes 
to just clean up the areas where I don't want the red applied. So this wheel here, there we go. I'm just using the alcohol to, uh, to clean off the red mica. There we go. And also I got a little bit in the, the window at the top. I'm just using a dry brush now just to soak up that alcohol. Yeah, and then just this section up here, there was a bit of red in there. There we go. So that's looking quite well. Then I can also use my red brush just to um, fix up any any holes or make sure that it's all applied evenly. Uh, any bits that I missed. There we go, I'm quite happy with that. Now I'm gonna mix up my green and um, just gonna dab it on with um, this brush. If I do a couple of layers and just sort of pile it on here, I can manage to get a pretty good layer of the green. It's also a little bit blotchy, which is kind of good. It's like, it looks a bit more, bit more realistic for a tree. So there we go. Uh, and here I am mixing up my white, just adding a little bit more glitter in there. I'm just gonna use the white for the hubcaps just to bring out the wheels and also just uh, to paint uh, the window there of the truck. Just very carefully filling that up with some white paint. There we go. I think he's looking pretty good. While that one's drying, I can move on to the next one. Okay, so it's the next day. I have let my little soap embeds dry overnight because they do need to be absolutely 100% dry before you try and embed them or else the mica will smudge. So I've left them overnight just to be sure. And here I am ready to embed them with the Buffalo plaid background. So again, I'm just making sure that that's all pressed down. And now uh, the first thing I'm gonna do is actually seal the buffalo plaid uh, with a thin layer of clear. If I place my embed on top and uh, just fill up the mold with clear as it is, the weight of the soap will push in between the, uh, the gaps between the mosaic tiles and uh, will push down through the bottom and I'll have a very unsightly soap. So first of all, I'm going to just seal it with about um, 15 to 20 grams of clear soap. I'm not weighing it out. I'm just pouring it until I can see that the entire surface is covered. Uh, I have not sprayed it with alcohol first because again, that will um, make the soap drip down in between the gaps and that's not what I want. But then once you have covered the entire surface, if you do have any surface bubbles, you can spray with alcohol then. Make sure that your embeds are nowhere near the alcohol when you spray them, because if they get a little bit of alcohol overspray on them, then they'll be wet again and you won't be able to embed them. You'll have to wait for them to dry all over again. So I put those very far out of the way to make sure that they didn't get any spray on them. Okay, so it's a very short time later and that very thin layer has set, set up really quickly. I am just playing with these and before I pour any soap and making sure I know where I want them to go, how I want them to look before I put any soap in. What I'm gonna do is I'm actually just gonna put a, little, a small dollop of soap in before I start, use that to position my embed and then I'll fill the rest up. So I'm just sort of eyeballing that now. So I'll be ready to know exactly where to put them later. I'm just gonna do one soap at a time. Uh, I find my clear comes out much clearer if I um, don't melt too much of it at a time. So I'm weighing out 40 grams here, which will be the remainder of one bar. And I'm gonna very carefully melt it in the microwave. There we go. And uh, I'm scenting it. I'm actually using um, Siberian fur essential oil uh, for this soap, which I think is uh, quite apt considering what it is. And uh, it's just gonna smell like a beautiful forest. We're gonna be able to smell that tree in the back of the pickup truck. 
Okay, so I've uh, mixed in my essential oil. There's a bit of lint stuck in it, which ironically is red. Huh, so it'll probably go really well. Um, I'm just fishing out that bit of lint there. There we go. And I am ready to pour. So as I said, I'm just going to do a small drop first of clear soap. Then I'm going to pop down my embed and make sure it's positioned uh, exactly where I planned it to go. Yep, I'm happy with that. And then I'm going to pour the rest of my soap around the embed. I am not game to pour any soap over the embed. What I let it do was I let it come up around the embed and then very slowly cover the embed by itself without me pouring on top of it because I don't want the heat or the, the force of the soap hitting the embed to smudge the mica. And that worked out pretty well. Uh, now it's time to do the second one. Here we go. Another 40 grams of clear soap. Again, I'm going to scent it with my Siberian fur essential oil. Mix it in as best as I can. Oh, it smells amazing. I really love that. It's one of my favorites, actually. I like the woodsy scents. There we go. Just spraying it with some alcohol, making sure there's, uh, there's no bubbles there. And I will give that a bit of a spray too. There we go. And pop that in. Position my embed very quickly. Yep, I'm happy with that. And again, pouring. Oh, that's just another, there's some bubbles in here. There we go. Pouring around the embed, but not over the top. And let's see if we can see here the soap. As it quickly, you can see at the end there, the soap just kind of goes whoop across the surface. But there we go. And uh, just a quick spray with alcohol to get rid of any surface bubbles. And they are looking absolutely amazing. I'm really happy with those. I was a little bit worried that I was going to smudge the mica. Uh, this one's got some bubbles in it, but that's okay. I'm just going to peel off this skin here and that'll get rid of those bubbles and make that one nice and clear. There we are really happy with those um, i'm gonna let them set for the best part of this afternoon and then i'll come back and demold them so here we are back again and these have now set solid let's take them out and have a look at them we know what they're going to look like from the front because we made them facing up but uh, i'm curious to turn them over and see what the buffalo plaid on the back looks like so let's just have a quick look at these here. Here's the front and there's the back. There they are, my little buffalo plaid mosaic. I think they look pretty good. Aren't they cute? All right, I have here um, just a, a soap bevel and I'm just going to bevel off these uh, edges because we made them uh, facing up. We got the, uh, the front edges are a little bit uneven, so I'm just going to bevel them off here. So we'll get a nice, even looking edge. As you can see, this beveling tool is very quick and easy to use. There's one bar done already. Nice, yeah, definitely a much neater edge there. Look at that, very pretty. And there's the back, I like it. All right, and if I do the other one, I'll just skip that, there we go. Okay, so they've both been done now. Here they are. My two beautiful buffalo plaid and red pickup truck melt and pour soaps. I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I really hope you like this October mosaic soap project. If buffalo plaid and red pickup trucks are your kind of Christmas style, then uh, definitely give these a go. Thanks everybody for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you like what we do and I'll see you next time. Thanks guys. Enjoy.